Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Hello, Roberta. What kind of a problem brought you in to see us today? I have this, this pain up here, and I've had it for a few months, and it, it comes on and off, and it, I, I just can't stand it anymore. It's been bothering me. Does it seem to be more on than off, or how it's, often would you say you get it? Oh, I could get it three times a day. I really don't know. It comes on for a while, and then it goes away, and then it comes on again. How long ago did the last attack of this pain start? <laughs> oh, uh, this morning. And it's been pretty steady since then? Yeah, and then it went away towards, you know, the afternoon. As soon as you decided to come in. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, would you describe this pain as being a real sharp pain or a dull pain or an aching type pain? It, I, I don't think it's dull. It, it's sharp, especially when I bite down on this side over here. Biting seems to make it feel worse. Yeah, it, it aggravates it a lot. Um, does anything else make it feel worse or make it seem to start? Like if you drank some ice, you know, ate some ice cream or something, does yeah. that bother your teeth? Cold, yeah. It sends a, a pain up there. How about if you eat something hot? No. That does nothing hot. No, it's mostly I bite into ice cream. I think that it really does it. Okay. Um, does it seem to be, you know, one tooth or does it seem to be, you know, can you tell exactly where the pain is? I think it's right. It's, it's one of these. It's one of those two. Yeah, maybe this tooth here. Have you had anything done to those teeth recently, like new fillings put in or anything no. like that? No. I saw the dentist um, a while ago, and he, he said that I didn't have any cavities, but I still have the pain. You still have the pain. Uh, do you ever find yourself um, grinding your teeth? What do you mean? You know what? No. No. How no. about um, clenching down real hard? Yeah, like I, I feel myself uh, doing that. Yeah. Um, do you ever have any pain like that radiates down into this area? No, it's mostly up, up moving up, up this up way. There. Yeah. Roberta, have you ever noticed any swelling in this area? Are no you? swelling. Um, do you ever hear any clicking noises when you <laughs> open your mouth yeah. real wide? You have quite a big click. <laughs> yeah, you sure do. Um, okay. Is there anything that you've been able to do that makes it go away by its, or does it just go away by itself? It just kind of goes away by itself. Okay, before we start looking at your mouth and seeing if we can figure out what it is, let me go over this health questionnaire that you filled out for us before. Uh, you said that you are taking some medication. Yes. Yeah. What are you taking? I'm taking uh, Sudafed for sinus condition. Okay, sinus condition. I think I did see that. You had circled that. Do you get this trouble very often? Yeah, constantly. Constantly. Yeah. It's constantly draining, too. Is it worse at this time or one of its better times? I think it, it's worse in the winter. Okay. Do you ever notice that this pain comes on at times when your sinus is worse? Have you ever noticed anything? No, I, I haven't really noticed. Okay, what else? So notice that you've got um, a reaction to penicillin. Right, I'm allergic to penicillin. Okay. The only other one that you've got down here is yes, is your jaw clicks when you chew, and we've already <laughs> right <laughs> gone over that. Okay, Roberta, before we start um, looking at your teeth, I'm going to go over just a couple of the of other areas of you just to make sure that they're okay, okay too. You look like you're in reasonable good health, not particularly in anguish right now. <laughs> and she's got a little bit of hoarseness to her voice. Is, my, is this a natural with you? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm also going to take a look at, at your lips and your tongue and all this kind of stuff first just to make sure that there's nothing going on there that is of any significance to add to your problem. It looks like you got a little scar on the gingiva above number eight. Which which one is? Right right up there. Up here? Mm -hmm. I had an accident up here with twelve stitches. I ran into something. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> Maybe that makes my jaw flip. I don't know. A rough life. Why don't you stick your tongue out at me? 
We'll grab hold of it here and take a look at it. Okay, she doesn't show any any ulcerations on her tongue or geographic tongue or anything like that. I'm just going to feel down under here, too. Okay. It's kind of an uncomfortable feeling, uh -huh. isn't it? <laughs> My eyes are tearing. <laughs> uh -huh. And it happens to people sometimes when we do this. Okay, let's start. Get that off your lap. And taking a look at the teeth. That, now, it's mainly up in this area uh -huh. that you've got the real trouble. Okay. Well, she doesn't have too many teeth. Did you have some taken out for braces? Yeah. Okay. Looking at number two, there's an occlusal amalgam in there, which seems to be pretty sound. Let me know if any of these areas that um, I feel get bother you when I do it. And number three has a class two amalgam on the distal and a class two amalgam on the mesial. That doesn't bother you when uh -uh. I scratch over the edges. And number four has a class six inlay in it. Okay. And number five isn't there. And six looks like a nice healthy tooth. No restorations in it or no 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 obvious caries on any of those teeth. The next thing I'm going to do is tap on all of them. And just let me know if any of them bother you when I tap on them. Okay. I'm even going to tap on some of the bottom ones because sometimes pain that seems like it's on top is really on the bottom. How about that one? Uh-uh. about that uh -huh. one? Okay. How about that one? Uh, how about that? Okay, let's go this one again. Uh -huh. Compare this one to this one. The first one you have. Okay, real sore, a little bit sore? No, just a little sensitive. Okay, let's try some of these on the bottom. How about that? Uh -uh. None of those. Okay. So it was just number three. It was a little bit sensitive. Now I'm going to check to see whether any of these teeth are at all loose. I'm not expecting them to be. I hope not. <laughs> okay. No, no mobility on there. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is check to see what kind of a reaction you have to cold. I'm going to put this little piece of ice on your tooth and just let me know as soon as you feel it. Okay, turn that way just a little bit. Feel anything yet? Okay, how about on this one? Don't feel any sensation at all? Uh, a little bit cold, you know. Okay, that's fine. Let's try this one here. Uh, got a little sting there. It kind of stings, you know, I okay. feel like a sharp pain. <laughs> has, has it gone away now that I've taken the ice yeah. off? Yeah. Okay, let's try this one back here. Uh-uh. It's, you know, cold. It feels a little cold. Okay, let's just check out these bottom ones, too. I cold. I'm going to get a bigger piece of ice next time, <laughs> just about melted on us. Number three was a slight sharp pain there, but the others were just a normal response to cold. Okay, have you ever seen a gadget like that? No. This, one? this is a vitalometer, and it's used to check to see whether teeth are still living, and we use a little dab of toothpaste with it. And what I'm going to do is just touch it to your tooth and turn it on, and you just let me know as soon as you feel it anything from it. Mm -hmm. Okay, you might feel a tingle, you might feel a sensation of warmth. And that's, mm -hmm. as soon as you get that response, that's fine. Do you want me to raise my hand? <laughs> you can raise your hand or say something or, you know, <laughs> grunt or, or whatever. Okay, we're going to start on, do it a different order here. I'm going to dry your tooth off. Okay. 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 <laughs> Reading on number two was 1.5. Okay, now let's move to another tooth. Okay. Okay, the reading on number three was one. Okay. Okay, and on number four was one. Dry off down on the bottom. Okay. 
number 30, 1.5. Okay. <laughs> number 31, 1.5. One more. Get a toothpaste out of your mouth. Feel that yet? Okay. <laughs> okay, that one's at about one and a half. All right, the next thing I want to do is to use some carbon paper on your teeth. Have you ever had dentists use this on your teeth? Yes. Okay, probably every time you got a filling, they <laughs> check. Well, these will, this paper will show us where your teeth are hitting together. First thing, before I put that in, I'm going to hold with this hand down on this, on your lower jaw, and I'm going to put my other hand here on your upper jaw. Now, this is going to feel kind of strange. Try to let me guide your jaw for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now bite real tight. Good. Open real wide. <laughs> That's good. Hear that jaw click again? Okay, just relax your jaw. Okay. Bite tight. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing, but this time I'm going to put the paper in. We'll okay. see what kind of marks we get. The blue paper will wash off eventually. Oh. You can brush your teeth a few times and it will all come off. Okay, see, so just relax your jaw. So that's good. Okay, just let me guide it now. Close down a little bit, just a little bit more. I'll bite real tight. Good. Open up just a little bit, a little bit more. Okay, just relax it now. Okay, bite real tight now. Now, with that paper in there, just make, okay, let me move the paper a little bit. Okay, now bite together again, and grind your teeth to each side with your teeth together. That's as far as, as far out to each side as you can go. And way out to this side, and now as far forward as you can go. And as far back as you can go. Okay, forward again. Then once more to each side. Okay, real good. That tastes terrible. I know, we should, you know, what flavor would you like it to be? <laughs> Not that one. Okay. Oh, she's got... Balancing contacts on numbers two and three. Is that good? Well, it's, it may be an indication of what part of the problem is. We have to check a few more things, too. And let's see, on the other side, she doesn't have any balancing contacts on the other side. And I don't see any evidence of um, CR contacts. And I wasn't able to pick up a slide. Okay, next step is to get some radiographs of those teeth, and then we'll be able to tell you, hopefully, what your problem is. Ah, oh, terrific. <laughs> okay, when we look at the radiographs, Roberta, these are your teeth. That's pretty <laughs> obvious there. The white things you see here are the fillings that you already have. I have plenty of those. Yeah, I've got plenty of those. Uh, on the bite wing, Shelly, she's got an open margin on number four, both the mesial and the distal. What, what does that mean? It means there's a slight, a slight opening between the filling and the tooth. Sometimes it's not very serious, and other times it can lead to the problem that you have. Uh, don't see any interproximal caries, though. <sighs> Terrific. That's, that's, good. <laughs> that's good news. Okay, on the others, um, okay, there's no periapical radiolucencies on any of those teeth. There's a slight thickening of the lamina dura on the mesial of number four. What is that caused by? Oh, it might be just you normally, or it might be that you're just putting a lot of extra forces mm -hmm. on that tooth, and it's just extra heavy bone in that area. There's no evidence of any infrabony pockets between the teeth, and there's no third molar present. Okay, let's talk about all the things that we found, and then um, I can let you know what I think is happening. From the information that I've gotten from you, from the history that you gave me, and from the examination, and from the radiographs, I've come up with oh, three or four possibilities that might be causing your pain. We're going to have to do a few more tests before we can either eliminate some of these or confirm mm -hmm. them. And then once we've decided what it is, then we'll be able to take care of it. From the information we have given you, you should have come up with one or more of the following differential diagnoses. Occlusal traumatism and bruxism, 
maxillary sinusitis, fractured tooth syndrome, leaky restoration, or degenerating pulp. In the rest of this presentation, we are going to show you how we came up with those diagnoses and what other information you need to make a definitive diagnosis of this case. When you have a patient present to your office with a dental emergency, in order for you to determine what the problem is, you should use a rational, logical system of examining your patient. This is going to include several facets, including the patient history, the clinical examination, the radiographic examination, combining all of this into a diagnosis, and then making a treatment plan from this diagnosis. The first step is collecting the patient history. This is involved with three different areas, the chief complaint, the present illness, and the past medical history. The chief complaint should be in terms of symptoms, not in previous diagnoses. The present illness should allow you to collect all the information that is available about the chief complaint, including location of pain or discomfort, duration, intensity, character, relieving factors, intensifying factors, everything that is going to give you any clue as to what is happening. The third part of the history is the past medical history. In this part, we want to find out about any underlying systemic diseases that are going to affect the chief complaint, we want to find out about any medications the patient's taking, any, any um, allergies, any conditions that are going to affect the treatment, such as a patient who needs premedication for rheumatic heart disease. What kind of a problem brought you in to see us today? I have this, this pain up here, and I've had it for a few months, and it, it comes on and off, and it, I, I just can't stand it anymore. It's been bothering me. Does it seem to be more on than off, or how it's, often would you say you get it? Oh, I could get it three times a day. I really don't know. It comes on for a while, and then it goes away, and then it comes on again. How long ago did the last attack of this pain start? <laughs> oh, uh, this morning. And it's been pretty steady since then? Yeah, and then it went away towards you know, the afternoon. As soon as you decided to come in. Yeah, right. Uh, would you describe this pain as being a real sharp pain or a dull pain or an aching type pain? It, I don't think it's dull. It, it's sharp, especially when I bite down on this side over here. Biting seems to make it feel worse. Yeah, it, it aggravates it a lot. Um, does anything else make it feel worse or make it seem to start? Like if you drank some ice, you know, ate some ice cream or something, does yeah. that bother your teeth? Cold, yeah, it sends a, a pain up there. How about if you eat something hot? No, that does nothing hot. No, it's mostly I bite into ice cream. I think that it really does it. Okay. Um, does it seem to be, you know, one tooth, or does it seem to be, you know, can you tell exactly where the pain is? I think it's right, it's, it's one of these. It's one of those two. Yeah, maybe this tooth here. Have you had anything done to those teeth recently, like new fillings put in or anything no. like that? No, I saw the dentist um, a while ago and he, he said that I didn't have any cavities, but I still have the pain. You still have yeah. the pain. Uh, do you ever find yourself um, grinding your teeth? What do you mean? You know what? No. No, how no. about um, clenching down real hard? Yeah, like I, I feel myself uh, doing that. Yeah. Um, do you ever have any pain like that radiates down into this area? No, it's mostly up, up moving up, up this up way. There. Yeah. Roberta, have you ever noticed any swelling in this area? No swelling. Um, do you ever hear any clicking noises when you open your mouth <laughs> real wide? Yeah, I have quite a big click. <laughs> yeah, you sure do. Um, okay. Is there anything that you've been able to do that makes it go away by its, or does it just go away by itself? It just kind of goes away by itself. Okay, before we start looking at your mouth and seeing if we can figure out what it is, let me go over this health questionnaire that you filled out for us before. Uh, you said that you are taking some medication. Yeah. What are you taking? I'm taking uh, Sudafed for sinus condition. Okay, sinus condition. I think I did see that. You had circled that. Do you get this trouble very often? Yeah, constantly. 
To summarize the important information we gained from Roberta, she has pain in the maxillary right quadrant of moderate intensity. It comes and goes. Her, some teeth are sensitive to cold, but not to heat. She has a click in her jaw that she's aware of. Uh, she is not able to precisely localize her pain. And she has a history of sinus problems. The next part of the dental emergency examination is the clinical examination. Most of the time we are going to pay attention to the area of the chief complaint, but to make sure that we do not overlook anything of significance in her general health or in other areas of her mouth, we're going to do a brief examination of her general overall appearance of the lips and oral mucosa and of the teeth and gingiva in general, being very brief, noting any obvious pathologies if this is not precisely what the chief complaint is. When we get to the area of the chief complaint, if the complaint is about a tooth or teeth, there are going to be routine tests that you will want to carry on for every patient. This will include a clinical examination with mirror and explorer, will include percussion tests, vitality tests with both the EPT and ICE, and an occlusal examination. There are going to be other times when other information is indicated, such as periodontal examination, probing for pockets or bifurcation areas, blood tests, cultures, exfoliative cytology. All of these will present themselves at some time. In the general oral exam, we're looking for anything that might contribute to findings of the chief complaint also to any other problem that might be going on concurrently. We want to explore the teeth, checking for obvious caries, open margins on restorations, wear facets, anything that might show up with a mirror and explorer examination. In percussing the teeth, we check not only the one that appears to be involved, but also others surrounding it, possibly on the other arch, possibly on the other side. In checking teeth for sensitivity to ice, we look for responses, similar responses between adjacent teeth, looking for no response or hypersensitive responses, checking not only the involved tooth but others in the arch. The same with vitality. Also want to check adjacent teeth and teeth in opposite sides to make sure that we're getting an accurate reading. During the occlusal examination, we're looking for centric slides, balancing interferences, working interferences, areas of traumatic occlusion, and we will also probably palpate the TM joint and the muscles of mastication. In the radiographic examination, we look for areas of caries, open margins on restorations, lamina dura around the teeth, areas of bone recession, uh, supernumerary teeth, periapical areas, third molars, whether they're present or not. Summarize the important information that we have found in Roberta's clinical examination. We notice that she has some sensitivity to percussion in the bicuspid and molar region on the right side. She has no obvious caries. She does have uh, sensitivity to ice on number three. And she does have the click in her jaw, which we noted also from the history. The radiographic examination, we noted no caries on there, no periapical pathology. We did notice a defective restoration on tooth number four. But all of these together have not given us a diagnosis. We only have a list of possibilities. So in order to narrow down our field to confirm the diagnosis or to reject others, we must do additional tests. And it's at this point we'll bring Roberta back in and show you some of the other tests that can be run to differentiate the five conditions, five differential diagnoses we listed. 
When you suspect that the problem is due to occlusal traumatism, there are other tests that you can do to help you confirm this. One of it, one test is to look for wear facets on the teeth. Another is to palpate the muscles of mastication and the TM joint. Open up, please. Palpating the masseter muscle, the internal pterygoid, the lateral pterygoid, the temporal muscles, and the, the joint itself. Open real wide. OK. Going through several different excursions. If you suspect that the diagnosis is a maxillary sinus problem, then one thing that you can do is to palpate over the sinuses, feeling for any areas of tenderness. You can also have your patient sit up, sit up please, and turn her head towards the area that affected and shake and see if you can shake some of the sinus fluid into the area which may intensify the pain. Another thing that you can do if you suspect a sinus problem is to take a water's view radiograph of the maxillary sinuses. Roberta does show fluid in the maxillary sinuses as pointed out by the arrow. For another situation, a possibility of a hairline fracture in the tooth, which is, by the way, one of the more difficult situations to diagnose, there are a couple other tests that you can run on the suspected tooth. One of them is a percussion test, but instead of percussing the tooth directly apically, percuss each cusp in turn away from the central fossa. In this way, you might separate the tooth a little bit, which should cause pain. Another way of picking this up, but using the same principle of trying to separate the fractured portion of the tooth, is to use a Kratex wheel or some similar device and put it between the teeth, okay, and then just have her bite together on it. This should, might cause intense pain if you have a fractured tooth syndrome because it separates the tooth a little bit. Another possibility for her situation is a leaky restoration. We did point out on the bite wing radiograph that there was an open margin on one of her restorations. The only definitive test for this is to replace the suspect restoration and see if the pain goes away. The last possibility that we mentioned was a degenerating pulp. And again, this is a very difficult one to diagnose until it becomes very definite. In an early stage, there might be increased sensitivity to EPT and cold, a pain that is hard to localize, no changes on the radiographs. In a situation like this, you may have to adopt a wait and see attitude, trying to relieve the symptoms as best you can, either with conservative occlusal adjustment or replacing the filling with a temporary filling, or even prescribing an analgesic and having her come back when the pain is more localized. In conclusion, when you are faced with a dental emergency situation, in order to give your patient the best service, you must conduct your examination in a thorough, logical manner so that you do not miss any of the pertinent information. Your examination should include a patient history, a clinical examination, a radiographic examination, and then a synthesis of all the information you've gathered into a definitive diagnosis if possible, or if not a definitive diagnosis, at least into a list of possible diagnoses, and then a rational treatment plan based on your diagnosis. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.